Okay guys, well in this video I am going to try and show you all of the amazing connections that this spectacular comet has with the Divine Man and the story of Divine Man and Mankind. Now, to start with, we'll just go through some background information on this comet to do with the discovery, which was from an astronomer called Lovejoy, hence the name of the comet, taken after the astronomer who found it. I find it interesting that this amateur astronomer from Queensland just happens to keep finding these extremely significant comets, so one would think he may even know where to look for them. But that's another video. Let's just continue on with what we can see so far with the information that connects to this beautiful comet. Now, the orbital period is three and a half thousand years inbound and eight thousand years outbound. Now, for those of us who know the processional cycle and the great year that mankind also exists in, we know that 11,500 years is pretty much halfway through a processional cycle. And you can bet that there are cycles within cycles and you can also bet that the Maya and the Aztecs knew about them and had calendars for them because they were just master mathematicians with all of these cycles that we exist within. And because these cycles are encoded into the fabric of creation, they're encoded into the fabric of divine man. That's how he can find himself in the fabric of creation. And so this comet holds a very special significance to divine man. And they have used it to relay information at a time in the cycle when some were awakening to the truth of who they were and would be able to understand this information. Because this is not the first time those who have been seeking knowledge have seen a connection to the Divine Man and Emerald. Because the gem has very important similarities to Divine Man and this is why we see it encoded in all of the mythology. It is a very important stone. Thoth is connected to the Emerald. We even see it in stories like the Wizard of Oz going to the Emerald City. It's all because they hold a similar attribute because everything is a fractal of creation and there are going to be fractals that are similar and so divine man identifies these fractals and then encodes knowledge within them and so this is how when mankind awaken they can find themselves again because they are encoded into the very fabric of the universe of creation and that's why all the archetypal symbols are the same because it's the same divine mind we all draw from and we're connected to this through our um, world soul, our soul tree of mankind holds this knowledge or accesses this knowledge from intermediate consciousness which is the consciousness between us and divine mind, the creator. And so we have seen now with the connections of the Emerald Comet that again the story of Divine Man can be seen within the numbers encoded within this comet because as I said we've got halfway through the processional cycle and then we've also got the 8,000 year outbound and 8 is a very sacred number and important number to the Divine Race and the colour Emerald and so of course Divine Man would know that the emerald colour was of great significance. So any comet that was going through those constellations would be an important comet to ensure that it was attributed to knowledge that could be once again 
interpreted correctly because really the way people look at mythology is not in the correct context and this is why the establishment has been able to give the ancients this appearance of not being very intelligent because they believed in all of these stories but in actual fact they were speaking a different language than modern man and modern man has to go back to that language because that is the language of mankind that has been stolen and taken away from us by Rome which is where it all leads all the esoteric side of the information and if you're not looking at the esoteric side of the information if you just want to look at the science you really won't get much out of this video but when you want to bring the two together the science and the spirit the science and the philosophy of the soul and the ethereal side then you get a better understanding for all of the information and so even if though we do go and have a look at the more physical side of the information, the scientific data, we've even got this comet expert, John Bortle, and he agrees this has to be the object with the most extreme photometric parameters I have ever observed when it comes to an intrinsically large comet. If only C2014 Q2 approached much closer to the sun, it might well have become the most brilliant comet in all of history. And the reason it doesn't come too close to the sun is that this is a per periodical comet that continues to come around. And so this is a very significant indicator for the rest of the cycle and for where we are in the cycle because it is showing us again that there is no such thing as anything being random and then this again falls into the principle of cause and effect and so it's not random that we discovered the connections between the emerald and divine man when uh, we put this all together about two months ago and I suggest anyone who wants to get a real understanding for what I will show you with the path of the comet through the different constellations and how it tells the story of divine man and mankind. You really should watch this video to give you an understanding of the connection the gem has to mankind and to the sacred geometry within creation because that's how we can understand creation because we go back to the laws of creation and the foundation which is sacred geometry and the creation of divine man and each soul is also based on those laws and so we can have an understanding for ourselves again when we understand these laws and the importance of how they connect to each soul and once again understand that there's an ethereal side to mankind that has been taken away and now mankind only sees himself in the physical and is unaware of his ancestry, his history, his, his connection to divinity and to divine man and to creator. He externalizes everything now or he removes the creator and makes himself God because he believes the establishment know um, how to be God now with their GMO food and their cloning and their white coat scientists which really just base everything on theory and this truth and knowledge doesn't as I said it backs itself up with sacred geometry and that's where you find the consistency and the pattern and then you know that you can take it as factual because it's reoccurring and it proves itself again and again. Unfortunately, the science that the white coats give you cannot do that. It's just a theory based on an equation that can't be demonstrated. See, this is different with the electric universe theory because it can be demonstrated in a lab environment and this is how the universe actually works. But we've had the Roman Catholic Church take away the 
truth and replaced it with half truth and so they've basically replaced first cause with big bang and first cause is just really there had to be a cause for an effect and it's just like the chicken and the egg and it's really just this mystery but the Catholic Church has brought it down to yes there was a definite explosion can't explain why but then we just continue forward and everything before us is better than and everything behind us is less than and so nobody understands the cycles that we're existing in the processional cycle the great year of the soul they're only focused on the physical year which is the calendar year because Rome has taken away that other side once again yet when you look through all of their information they have the zodiac all through the Vatican and all of their temples so they tell their flock one thing and then they go and do another thing because they know the truth behind all of the esoteric information and that side of mankind that is not so readily seen and it has to come through knowledge and intuitive observations um, and you know an understanding with more a heart based intellect because you're trusting what your intuition is telling you and that's allowing you to make other connections that then confirm themselves and so this is how you really do find truth you go seeking for it and just keep making the connections and don't stop until you've had an understanding of them and so basically this is what we can do now with the Emerald Comet apply all of this other understanding we have of the symbolic language of mankind that has been lost except for now we have the codes of mankind that we can see the similarity in all, all of their mythologies so we have an understanding for the creation of mankind from the divine man because that is the same story in every civilization every philosophy is telling you that same story because they're all of the one race all of the four races the black the red the white the yellow are all of the one race 144 divine tribes that mankind are all descended for, from that is the root anchor of mankind in the four races so all of this bickering over the different colors of skin and all of the bickering over the different texts that the Antichrist has taken control of and manipulated is futile because it's the same story and so you have to take it back to the core by being a seeker and this is why I say if you go to seeking truth you really will find it because that it, it is even written that you, you can go and seek truth to be found and it's it's shown in multiple texts and mythologies that the seeker will find what they're looking for if they actually take that path to seek because there is a road there back to yourself so if you look for it you will find it but you have to open the mental eye and that's who these videos are for those with the mental eye open that can have an understanding for the information in the in the way that it should be interpreted and how that then actually plays out in your own experience because by understanding this knowledge you have more of an understanding of yourself and then that impacts your environment in a causal way and so you are making change just by intellectual intellectually growing consciously with new information and this is how we work on a causal way you know this is why you don't just keep this knowledge locked up in your head you have to use this to navigate your path to a um, more you know positive suitable path that you want to be going down with your soul journey than one where you're going through all these negative events because you're not really paying attention to the esoteric side of the information and this is what the initiates mean when they say that they they use the laws to to move through their experience and they know how to actually do this and this is because you can when you have an understanding for yourself 
and that's where it comes from. It's not really in activating anything, it's rather in having a full understanding and it's like then you experience this paradigm shift where you just suddenly it all comes together and you have this full understanding of everything and it's just rock solid in you and that changes your whole perception for everything else. That's where you want to come to to then be able to move forward with a complete new understanding for who you are as a part of creation on this planet. Because if you don't really understand that, you're just happy to go along with the program of Rome that tells you you're just a slave that goes to work and you're just really who your job is. Instead of who you are as a person, as a illuminated soul here to, you know, be for the benefit of creation. Regardless of nobody appreciating that, you still just do it because you do it for creation, you do it for God, you do it for Mother Earth, you do it for just because you want to stand for what's good and what's right. And if you can just do that and be the hermit, basically go back to being the hermit and walking that path, then you can't really not find that path because it will be there it will show itself to you and really this is also this paradigm shift that I'm talking about is the number 12 card the hangman card that's also another good symbol of where the soul is just completely turned around because the profound information has finally reached its destination and connected all of the right neurons together for this understanding to fully come together and this paradigm shift to fully come together. And you can't do this with DMT and all of these drugs. But this is what they're all aiming for, that feeling of that paradigm shift. But that only comes to you when you understand who you are and that's through knowledge seeking. That's what all the symbolism shows. I'm not just actually saying this, which is what you'll find most um New Age blogs do, I'm actually saying the symbols of the Divine Females always shown with knowledge, books. Okay, and even the male, it's the Divine Male, it's always to do with knowledge and information. So that's the key. You know, even St. Peter holds the key. Okay, and that's the key, it's knowledge. It's knowledge about who we are and that's all they had to take away from us. Once they took that away, that was it. We were lumps of meat. Okay, and we believed it. So we've got to go back to thinking about how we are as an ethereal soul and start perceiving ourselves more in that way again because that's our true nature and really as I keep you know, showing with all the information as well, it shows that that's where divine man and mankind are in their element, are back in the fifth ether. It's when we're in the physical that we're not in our true element but this is also where the universe works to sort the chaff, you know, the weed and the chaff. Again, we're seeing archetypal symbolism. You know, the weeds being cut down, the Saturn with the sickle. I mean, it's the end of the cycle. And so, again, this is where this comet is actually showing this story as well of divine man going through all the constellations. So what I've done is basically just made three different diagrams of the comet going through all the constellations and I've actually just pieced together the stories that each of, each of these constellations are connected to and then tried to interpret them in a way that we can have an understanding for the language rather than just see it as the establishment archaeologists and historians and that type of you know, um, knowledge giver wants us to go. We actually will see the mythology through new eyes of interpreting it correctly in the correct context to man and divine man. And so when you understand that full story, then you'll have a better understanding for all of the mythology because that's exactly why the mythology was written and that they went to such lengths to write these manuscripts. I mean, have you seen the Hindu manuscripts and how involved they are? These people didn't just do this in a year. This was their life work and this is because this was about mankind. And of course they knew there would be a time where there would be this faction within 
the human race that would seek to take control by destroying the knowledge because we do move into physicality and unconsciousness and this happens every cycle. So there's always preparation for that to occur. And this is why so many of these texts are left everywhere. So, you know, it's harder for the opposing side to destroy everything. And they never can because, as we can see, it's encoded within the very fabric of creation, the way the comet goes through all of these constellations and how divine man and the emerald share similarities in creation too. So they never will actually be able to take the knowledge. No matter how many books they burn, how many people they kill and slaughter, they will never take mankind's knowledge. They will, however, gain the upper hand on mankind as we move into physicality and this will bring us into a time of a very unconscious nature where we are very violent, over-sexualised, um, our young people are being destroyed, our children are being over-sexualised and destroyed by the media and just even the, you know, gender uh, confusion. Uh, it's all this continuing destruction of the human race at the hands of these people that have taken control of the knowledge. This, as I call them, the Antichrist, because they're against the Christ in you. The Christ light in you that you carry as part of the Creator. They want to extinguish that just like they want to extinguish God and anything that's divine. So this is what you have to remember again, and this is what these signs are showing us if we know how to see them. And the problem is, is that they have really got man's psyche controlled. We've had these false flag comets since 2011, which ironically is when I started on YouTube, and now I see this beautiful emerald comet that is connecting to information that I found two months ago. It even becomes more profound because I have seen these comets coming in and I have seen the hysteria that the media can choose to whip up for them or can choose not to. And they haven't with this Emerald Comet because even the Vatican hasn't got anything about the Emerald Comet on their side. You know, now these guys have equipment that rivals NASA. You would think they would be interested in this periodical comet that comes around half a processional cycle. I mean, they are watching the stars and the constellations, are they not? But no, seems that they're not interested. But I think we can work out that, yeah, they're not real happy to see the Emerald Comet. So it's just real low-key at the moment. You know, they report on it when they can. Mainly it's the space sites that keep bringing us these beautiful photos. But it's illuminated in the sky right now, which again... You wonder why they aren't making this big fanfare about this comet. Everybody can go out and see it. It's going through some of the most significant constellations in our sky, which I will show you. And yet, barely anyone looks up from their iPhone and really is talking about this comet compared to when I first started on YouTube researching into all of this information back in 2011. This information would have just, well... I don't think we would have been ready for this information back in 2011. It's definitely been a revealing and an uncovering. But, nevertheless, it does show me that there was definitely a push for them to over-sensationalise comet element. And even ice on. Yet, this comet just slips in the back door and it happens to be, you know, one of the most beautiful, rare comets that mankind have seen. So that's where we can see that uh, the people who want us to understand about the times we're in and people who don't. And as I said, the people who don't are anti the Christ in you. Therefore, they're the Antichrist. So unfortunately, people have brought that down to some devil-looking creature, but really it's a group of people that are anti the Christ. And they don't want this story of mankind that I'm about to tell you to be known. They want that to be locked up in the Vatican forever.
but it just doesn't work that way because there is always rhythm and there is always the tide going in and the tide going out and their tide's going out. So let's have a look at these diagrams. Now the first one starts off with the comet going through Puppis, Columba, Lepus and Eridanus. And so I had to look at Puppis because I hadn't really known a lot of information about that and I'm glad I did because it turns out that Puppis is the um, stern of the ship from Jason and the Argonauts which is another story, another mythology of divine man going through lower and higher consciousness, the summer and winter of divine man and mankind. It's basically what all the mythology is about. And so this is basically what Jason and the Argonauts are about. But the ship from that mythology is very important because Puppis is related to the rudder. And the rudder has the brightest light, the brightest star attached to it. And so that is very significant because it's showing you that your rudder is what determines your destiny and your journey. You are in control of your ship. And so it seems to show that we are starting with our ships and our rudders at Puppis ready for our journey. And then we have um, Columba. Now again I wasn't really sure about Columba and then when I looked at the information it made perfect sense because Columba represents the Holy Spirit which is like God consciousness that rides in on the ether. It's almost like a part of the ether that contains the light of the Creator's divine intelligence, you know, the divine light that also shines from other angles too. I mean, there is a light that just illuminates everything, including the Creator, and it illuminates through the Creator to the divine man on terra firma and also all of the other nebula are illuminating at the same time with Columba with this Christ light and this is why they show it above the divine male and female is because this is how their divinity within them illuminates because they will illuminate they will actually illuminate as a being and from what I'm seeing with the artwork and the symbolism, it looks like it might even look like the Northern Lights doing that magnetic way that the ray comes out and moves around in ribbons. That could be the way the light is around the divine rays when they illuminate. But they will illuminate and the science shows that that actually can happen. There is actually... Um, modern science that shows that we contain um, luminescence in our skin materially but we can see that with the law of correspondence because if Mother Earth can get halos, auroras and all of the other planets can get auroras and halos then mankind can also get auroras and halos. It's the same principle because remember everything plays out on all the planes and so this Columba is a part of this illumination process that will happen as the divine race set forward on their ships with their rudders at the beginning of the cycle. Now um, Lepus is also showing the divinity and knowledge within divine man and it's connected to knowledge um, in a way that we can see divine knowledge is very much like a rabbit hole because we know that it's all fractal and so you can just keep following information it will keep taking you in different um, ways and you will just keep following it and this is why they've used the archetypal symbol of the rabbit and you'll see that quite often with um, the divine female because again the divine female is connected to knowledge and the divine male is connected to wisdom and so he illuminates and brings down the archetypes and then it's the divine female that has an understanding for the archetypes and can put them together to relay the story and of course this is why the Antichrist has sought to turn the female into nothing but a breeder and a prostitute 
You know, I mean, this is what the Roman Catholic version of the Divine Female is within Mary Magdalene and the Virgin Mary. So you can see where they have definitely just corrupted all of this information, but especially knowing that part of mankind searching for information also requires the understanding of the female intellect of the information too to decode the symbolism and to have an understanding. And this is even why we also see the rule and measure with the Freemasonry symbolism, which is the same esoteric information that everything else is based upon. And they just showed it in that way, in the, in the symbolism, because it's true. It is the rule and the measure. And so it is the, you know, law and the archetype that is the rule brought down from divine mind. And, um, yeah, it just works in that way. And so this is why you see the knowledge uh, and the books with the divine female and you see the other symbolism with the divine male being a part more of the divine mind, more connected in a way that is carried internally like a lamp within. So now that we understand Columba and as I said with rabbit holes, I mean you can even go down rabbit holes with the reason the establishment are using this name, Columbia that blew up and um, Columbus the discoverer, I mean this is what happens with this information. It just expands upon itself if you want to go there. Some people will just see this as a really interesting story and leave it at that. So, you know, that's fine too. But if you do want to use this information to go and seek more knowledge, then you can do that too. Because this is, as I said, the core understanding of creation and mankind. So, when you understand the mythology of mankind that's been left in every single culture, then it's like the doors do fly open. This is why the Hermetic philosophers say when you understand the seven principles the, the doors of wisdom you know will just the, it'll fly open for you and this is what happens and then all of the symbols start making an understanding you know you start seeing them in their right context and you start being able to interpret these symbols for yourself and see them in different contexts as in the stories and paintings and know the story that's being told to you instead of just looking at it like some dumbass that's just gone to a lecturer that's created these stories as though they've been relayed by people that weren't, you know, as technologically smart as modern man. So if you've fallen for that, really, it's not going to serve you well in understanding who you really are because Rome are not going to give you the right version, I'm, I'm afraid. You actually have to go and find that for yourself because they are, are not going to give it to you. They've taken it. And so we finally come to Eridanus and we can see Eridanus is the river that comes down from the bottom of Orion and it's what the divine race arrive on from Eridanus, from Orion. And you can even see that the ship allegory is very good to have an understanding of even how divine man works in their illumination because it's almost like when the tide comes in, divine man comes in. His ship comes in. When the tide goes out, his illumination wanes. He becomes trapped in physicality and matter. Forgets his greatness. And so, yes, we're seeing the way the comet goes through, though, that they're ready to arrive in on Eridanus from controlling their stern puppets. So that's the first part to the story. And then the story changes slightly and starts showing us a little bit more information into the science and the more um, larger understanding of who divine man and woman are and what their archetypes are connected to. So we have part two. And this involves a mythology uh, connected to Andromeda and Perseus. 
But before we actually look at the mythology, the comet's showing us to look first at divine woman and divine man. And we can even see the comet actually goes through divine woman first on the 15th of January and then Aries, divine man, goes through on the 22nd. And the interesting thing is too is that 22 is actually connected to the Messiah. It's that number 22. And so we're seeing also the Empress and the Emperor card in the order they're in the tarot because the Empress is third and then the Emperor is fourth. Even though in the ethereal form, which is the Magician and the High Priestess, which is the ethereal form for the Divine Male and Divine Female, we see the Magician is one, the High Priestess is two, but that mirrors when they are created materially and then we see the Empress is three and connected to Venus and Taurus is ruled by Venus and she shows Venus on her heart cushion on the Empress card and then number four is the Emperor and we've got two and two here also equal four Aries connected to the ram and we see four rams heads on the chair of the emperor and Aries is ruled by Mars. And so now we have accounted for the divine male and the divine female. So then we go on to the mythology and we've got Andromeda, Perseus, Cassiopeia and Cepheus. Now the mythology goes that Cassiopeia is the mother of Andromeda and so Cassiopeia can be seen as the female side of the creator because the creator is androgynous and so we do see the creator in um, the female aspect as well as the male in some instances and in this instance in the mythology it's showing the female side of the creator and Cepheus is more relating to intermediate consciousness which can also be connected to divine man in the way of being a creator because they are actually birthed through intermediate consciousness ethereally. And so now that we see both the first extension from the creator and the creator's female aspect accounted for, we can understand the mythology of the female part of the creator, which might be maybe somewhat when it goes into the extreme um, vein, was actually saying to everybody that her and her daughter were just, there was no one could compare to her and her daughter. And so this angered Poseidon. And Poseidon can be seen as connected to the ether because anything that's connected to the ocean and the sea and the marine is connected to the ether and the symbolism and the esoteric symbolism. And so... Poseidon is actually now angered by this and this is symbolically relating to the polarity of the rhythm and the tide going in and out. So now we're going to see the tide of ether going out because Poseidon's angry that Cassiopeia has been vain. And so this causes uh, Poseidon to actually do a deal with Hades. Now Hades can be seen as the um, energy that is connected to the ethereal side where the soul goes in between physical incarnations and based on the weight of the soul when you go over to the ethereal side after your physical death will be where you are in Hades before your next incarnation and so Hades has different levels but Hades is also representing the ethereal and so this is why we see it connected to Poseidon and the mythology goes on to say that Hades then helps put Andromeda um, on this rock chained there and cannot be moved and is at the mercy of Cetus which is the like reptilian consciousness within mankind and when we see these beasts and mytholo mythological monsters this is what we've got to understand this is the side of mankind that traps him within matter that keeps him down at his sacrum chakra that keeps him you know, motivated by lust and indulgence. And so this is just basically showing in the symbolism that when the cycle is in very uh, physical times and this is rampant in the unconsciousness of man, there is 
nothing really that can be done to help the ethereal females, um, or rather the divine females, because they are basically chained by law because stone equals the law and will of God. Um, and so not only that, it does also equate to physicality. So the divine female is trapped in physicality for a set amount of time by law. And it's only when the ether returns, which is what Perseus arrives on, which is why he's on uh, Pegasus and the wings, it's the ethereal, and um, then we see uh, Medusa's head, which is actually slaying the unconscious part of mankind, the sacrum area that's been lost in lust, you know, and that um, actually the divine, um, um, I should say, the, um, the female uh, has actually partaken in as well and uh, perpetuates this, um, you know, mankind staying in the sacrum area. And so this is what this slaying of Medusa actually also means. And also the turning to stone is, you know, the men that get trapped in that sacrum chakra are actually trapping themselves in stone and in physicality and will drop like stone. Their soul will drop like stone, you know. So this is what's shown in that aspect of the mythology as well. And so... This is pretty much what this part of the information is showing. And so Perseus arrives with the ether to basically uh, illuminate uh, the divine race and um, the divine female and remove the unconscious, you know. And so this is why they use Perseus and Andromeda as archetypes for the divine race because there are 144 tribes and so... Perseus and Andromeda are only the male and female archetype for all of the divine male and female. And these archetypes are the strongest and why we see them so predominant in the way that they are used by the establishment that have taken control of religions for the saviour like Jesus and Muhammad. They've been able to bring it all down to one person and really make everybody just focus on this one saviour that's unattainable in perfection and just given mankind a completely, you know, incorrect perception of himself because each of us carry divinity within us and there are more than just one divine, you know, male and female or divine male saviour as the Christian Catholic doctrine have you see, it's actually a race. So people that actually treat the female in that way by actually partaking in the scripture as it's interpreted by Rome, you are actually destroying part of the creator, his daughters, the story about his daughters that Rome has removed. And so I can't imagine the creator consciously would be pleased about that. So that's just my observations on that. So let's go to part three. This is going to be quite a big video. But it is a lot of information to get through, and as I said, we can continue go, you know, continue going down all these rabbit holes because it will just lead us in other areas. Now, this is where it gets really interesting too, because we can make a connection to Egypt and the pyramids, and we can see that Ursa Minor is connected to the bear, which is connected to Orion. We see um, Draco is connected to the tribe of Dan. The tribe of the serpent and the tribe of the north and we also see the north side of the pyramid is actually facing Draco, Ursa Minor and Thubis and so we've even got again another connection to this mythology that this emerald is showing us and then Draco because it's actually symbolising the firstborn of all the divine tribes, it then shows you the layering because you have the gold, the silver and then you have the bronze tribe which is the first emanation from the gold and silver and then after this is symbol symbolised, we see boots which seems to be the firstborn of the bronze which is the connection between the gods and mortals. And this is where we see Iron Man coming in. And this is where we see the mythology of Hercules, half man, half God. 
So when you look at Hercules and the stories about Hercules, and he was only half man, half God, you can understand how powerful the divine race are in the gold and silver tribes that Rome has sought to remove from the story and bring them down to lamb-carrying uh, saviours that are perfect. So the mythology is actually showing something quite different when you actually go and seek the information for yourself. And so you can then go into all of the mythology about Hercules, which I won't do in this video. But, you know, as I said, um, I would suggest that if you want more of an understanding, you can go seek more of an understanding for all of these constellations. There will be more confirmations to be found. Um, if you so find any of these confirmations and wish to share them, please do because, you know, we're always interested in, you know, building a bigger picture because that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to put together what Rome has taken from us and destroyed, you know. And if people think that I bring Rome up enough then or, or too much, you know, then I do because I really want people to actually start identifying where the enemy is and why we don't have this understanding of ourselves anymore. So I will constantly remind people that this is why we have to piece this information back together the way we do and find these connections with all of the sacred geometry and the sciences behind creation that we can actually have an understanding for when we go back to the original sciences such as hermetics which is now what white coat science, modern science, is confirming anyway through quantum physics, the principle of vibration, through the holographic universe theory they're just coming out with. Well, Hermetics knew of that thousands of years ago. Okay, it's called the mental universe. All is mind. And so... You know, once you get the science and the understanding of the science, then you can understanding the science, you can understand the science of the spirituality, but you have to bring the two together. As I said, to have a true understanding for what was just relayed here, you've had to brought science and mythology and the ethereal and the spiritual and the esoteric together. And this is also what Einstein even said. He said that... Science without religion was lame and basically that um, religion without science was blind and so they needed each other to have a full understanding. And so that's really where people need to be if you're going to have an understanding for what I discuss in these videos and I really don't think that this is beyond anybody's understanding. If you truly want to seek and you truly want to come at this information like just an individual soul, a blank canvas that's been created here from Creator and now you're setting on your journey, setting out on your journey to discover yourself and you will just take information based on whether you can weigh and measure that on your soul and on your heart and whether that's telling you that that's truth based on law. And then you just keep confirming that with everything that you look at to build a picture. And then that's what becomes truth, and that's what you need. You really need to have a good understanding of truth to get through the end of the cycle. And this is also why you'll see uh, with the Gospel of Thomas, it says whoever understands the interpretation of these parables will not taste death. And this is because when you have a true understanding of yourself then you have what it takes to walk the path back to your crown and you can reach your crown but you cannot reach your crown if you are ignorant to who you are if you are just going to be listening to people tell you information that they want you to believe then you will not have a good understanding of who you are you have to go and weigh and measure that yourself and so that is what I seek to do and that's always what I've done with my channel since 2011 since Comet Elenin when I first started it's always been to seek an understanding for everything and it has to weigh and measure I will go and search it out for myself until I come to an understanding that satisfies me and if I don't I will just keep going and that's what each of us have to do and the truth can then be found because the truth is law 
And everything is created upon law. And Emerald Comet is proving that to us. So, all right, I will leave it there, guys. And uh, I've ho I hope I've put that together in a way that's coherent and uh, you've understood and enjoyed. And uh, as always, peace out.